What is up? Welcome back to the channel. It is Monday. Just a guy on my lunch break is here with you. And guess what? We hit a milestone this past weekend. Um, broke 700 subscribers. I'm at somewhere around 707, 708 right now. And uh, I'm really appreciative of that. It's one of those things where it's almost shocking at times. I'm like, man, you know, that many people clicking that subscribe button just to hear little old me on here chattering about life and Kratom and, uh, you know, other things. But one thing that has become clear to me is a lot of people just want to have an outlet, you know. A lot of people just want to be able to talk about it, you know. It's one of those things that for so many of us and for so many people in our lives, it's a hush, like, shh, 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 shh. No, you know, don't tell anybody. My family can't know, you know, my spouse can't know. I mean, definitely can't tell my parents, you know. You know, there, there's all these feelings of secrecy around it you know and it's not so much having to do with kratom as much as it is why you're doing the kratom and the indications of someone who takes something regularly multiple times a day right and and you know i liken it to the fact that hey you know my wife might have a, a glass of wine every evening right she might have two sometimes um and there's nothing wrong with that and you know people on the outside would look and they would say there's, you know nothing wrong with that i mean obviously she's handling her business this and that and the other but then we sometimes try to uh you know couple kratom in there with something like that and it may be for some people but you have to look at it through the lens of how many times you're using and how many times you're dosing. In other words, you look at my wife, you know, she's a mother, she works a full-time job, she takes care of her family, she's a, she's a, a mother, a wife, a full-time employee, daughter, all of these things, and stays on top of all those things uh, f fantastically. I don't know anyone who does it better, all right? And she'll have a glass of wine or two in the evening, but... Um, and that's okay. And people look at that, well, you know, she obviously has it under control. No big deal. I mean, look at the rest of her life too, you know, no real negative consequences. She's never had a DUI, you know, she's, she's fine. Obviously she's not an alcoholic. Right. Um, but then if you took that and you said, but she drinks a glass of wine as soon as she gets up in the morning, or she drinks a glass of uh, another glass of wine at lunch. And then she turns around at two or three o'clock, drinks another glass of wine. Then people would kind of start raising their eyebrows and looking at you sideways, kind of like. So, 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 let me get started. So when she first wakes up, it's one of the first things she does is drinks a glass of wine. And then she's taking another one by like midday. I mean, are we talking about midday like? 12 o'clock midday or you know what do you mean she drinks another glass of wine at 10 a.m you know then drinks another glass at 12 then turns around at 3 3 30 in the afternoon has another glass of wine you know at, at that point it would be like okay yeah this, this is probably an issue there that needs to be looked at right <laughs> um so when we sit and try to make the comparison of, well, you know, Kratom, I mean, it's, it's a big deal, you know, it's just like, you know, somebody who has a few drinks here and there. Yeah, but that person is going all day in most cases without having a drink. Now, there are people that drink during the day. I'm concerned for those people, right? But the difference is in the consistency of the use, right? And that's when it becomes more of a concern. And so I'm not saying that, uh, you know, and you, that's not exactly like comparing apples to apples. That's kind of like apples to oranges. And one of the reasons for that is th there's multiple reasons not to drink during the day. One of those is you can't drive while you're drinking. Well, why is that? Well, the reason you can't drive while you're drinking is because it inebriates you in a physical way 
that it impairs your ability to be able to drive and to operate machinery, right? Now, if you were to take something like an opiate, um, you know, of course, it's going to have a little warning on the label. If you took like a, a bottle of Vicodin or something, you could look on the label and see, hey, take care when operating machinery. Some people aren't used to the effects. It could make you sleepy, this and that, the other. But you notice, take care. It doesn't say don't do it. It says take care. Well, why is that? Because opiates are a completely different class of substance, right? And opiates, especially in the smaller amounts, don't affect you in a way to where it, you know, it's more like a, a mood enhancer. You know, you could go past any road uh, field sobriety test or road sobriety test ever given or ever known to man um, as long as you haven't taken a really, really large amount of opiates, then you could, you could go past those things, right? So it is a little bit different. It's not exactly like comparing apples to apples because if you saw somebody drinking all throughout the day, you would be worried about, well, damn, you know, they could get a DUI doing that, driving around, right? And kill a family, a four, you know, driving around on the road like that. Secondly, people smell it. Can't hide the smell of alcohol right and so you can't get close to people you can't this and that so then when you look at something like kratom in comparison to that you can drive no problems um and and you also uh it's much easier to keep it a secret right much easier to keep kratom a secret than it is something like um an alcohol addiction now does that make it okay well that's when we start making the comparison of apples to oranges. It's not apples to apples anymore. Now it's apples to oranges. Well, does that make it okay just because it's easier to keep it a secret? Or does that make it okay to take it multiple times a day just because it doesn't keep you from being able to safely drive from point A to point B? You know, and, and that kind of information is really in the mind of the user in the mind you know how they say beauty is in the mind of the beholder well that information is in the mind of the user depends on what that person uh you know how that person feels about that and how they process that information and uh you know i had a a friend say to me just a little while ago we we're just talking about you know kratom and this and that uh i won't mention his name when he hears this he'll know who he is but uh we were just talking and and he goes, you know, imagine a life where Kratom had no withdrawal. Because we were talking about tapering and the withdrawal and stuff like that. And uh, and I thought, yeah, well, and, and I think kind of where he was going with it, you know, it, he was insinuating that, yeah, I think it'd be super easy to come off. You know, you wouldn't have to worry about all that stuff. You wouldn't have to worry about the negative consequences and the discomfort and the withdrawals and the acute, you know, sort of negative feelings that you get when, when going through withdrawal. And it would be super easy just to put it down. And I thought, yeah, that's true. That's, that's a good point. It would make it easier. But then we talk about the fact that there's a flip side to every coin, right? And then immediately I thought, or maybe not, because, you know, one of the reasons that all of us are here is because we take Kratom, we obviously like the way it feels, we obviously like what it does for our mood, for our energy level, stuff like that, but we all have gotten to a point, at some point, where we've said, okay, yeah, this I can see where there's some negative kickbacks here. And one of those negative kickbacks is you're taking it, taking it, taking it. And then one day you're just like, you know what? I feel kind of like a drug addict. I'm just taking this shit all the time. Let me stop. See what it's all about. Well, then you go to stop. And when you go to stop, a whole different picture begins to form, right? And then you're like, oh. Oh, hmm, okay, yeah, this sucks, basically, it's hard to stop, you know, and you get all these negative withdrawal symptoms, right, and then, so, so that's one of those things where I thought about it, I was like, yeah, if there was no withdrawals, that would be, you know, no problem, man, you could just quit whenever you wanted to, 
But then, if there was no withdrawals, what reason would you really have to quit? You know, it would be, we talk about those pros and cons on here. You know, what are the pros that Kratom brings to you versus that list of cons on the other side, right? And then when you put those two things on, on a scale to balance them, are the pros weighing heavier than the cons? Are you getting this? Or is it the opposite? And you're like, oh shit, now you know I'm getting more negative consequences. I'm getting more cons than I am positives, right? And so the scale starts to tip in the other direction. And uh, I think that weighing process is different for everyone based on how much they use, how long they've been using it, um, you know, what, what level of addiction are they? You know, because I think there's people out there that they're addicted, but it's just not in their DNA to be one of those people that's just, oh, I got to have this every two hours. You know, it's just not, you know, and that's, my wife is that way. Um, she's a person who will use a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and she'll toy around with it. But I've never seen her go overboard with anything. I, and I've been married to this woman for 10 years, and I've never, I may have seen her inebriated maybe one time maybe once, maybe twice, and it was both times where her and I are together at home, and we were celebrating something, and we weren't out anywhere, we were at home, we were, you know, in the comfort of our own, uh, of our own space, and all that good stuff, and she's just not a person that has that overdo it sort of addict mentality, you know, and some people don't, some people do, Right, and and so uh, where that point is, and how that scale tips when it comes to weighing those pros and cons depends on a lot of different things. You know, it depend, depends on the person themselves um, and what their history of substance use and abuse has been. Right, but but I got to thinking about that. I was like, yeah, that's a great point. I mean, if you you know, there was no no negative kickbacks. Like, oh, no problem. I could just quit whenever I wanted to. But then you wouldn't want to if there was never any negative kickbacks <laughs> because a, a lot of us, that that thought of, okay, this is not a good thing, when that manifests for most of us is when we see those withdrawals start to manifest. We're like, okay, so far, taking this Kratom, so far, everything's good. Everything's good. Everything's good. It almost seems too good to be true. Well, now I went to stop. And now I see that it's not too good to be true, that there is um, a negative counterbalance side to this Kratom thing, right? And for a lot of us, when we saw that, that's what flipped that switch in our brains where we're like, okay, all right, so, so it's not all good. You know, there's, you know, there, so there is a negative side to this much like there is anything else. Um, and, and it's true, anything else. It's absolutely true. Um, and I've, I've used this analogy before, you know, food is good for you. Um, food is good for you. But there are people who are morbidly obese and weigh 400, 500, 600 pounds. And when you get to that point, you're no longer using food in a responsible moderate sort of way right so then food no longer is um beneficial for you but it becomes a detriment to you you know causing all kinds of you know diabetes i mean heart conditions you know people could have just killed over dead from heart attacks for stuff like that you know and and it just it just really is something different from one person to another sorry about that guys but um but, uh, what was it, what was it? yeah, so, so, you know, you think about food and you think about the different dynamics there. So it's, it's like that with, you know, you think about vitamin C, vitamin C is good for you, right? Vitamin C is good. Magnesium supplement is good for you. But if you take entirely too much vitamin C or you take entirely too much magnesium, guess what? Your body don't like that. And you're going to have diarrhea. <laughs> 
<laughs> because you did it in excess, right? So my point in all of that is Kratom in and of itself is not necessarily the devil. It is not necessarily a horrible thing. It becomes this horrible thing when we are a person who has the inability to use it wisely or to use it responsibly or to use it moderately, right? That's when it becomes this thing where it's like, okay, scales have tipped. It's no longer the pros are up here and the cons are down here. Now the pros are starting to be down here and I'm seeing all these negative consequences. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, in, in a, in a perfect world, it would be crazy. Oh wow. No, you know, no, no side effects. If I quit, no withdrawals, I might be great. I could just quit, but then you wouldn't want to quit because you would be like, I can quit whenever I want to. It's no big deal. And, and it's all relative. You can kind of tell how it feels when you go to stop taking something is perfectly counterbalanced and relative to how bad that substance is for you, right? If when you go to stop, you feel really, really shitty, then that means the way that you've been using it is pretty bad. And the way that you're using it is not really good for you right? If you stop something and you don't have any ill effects, you don't have any withdrawals, you don't have any negative side effects at all, it's kind of like, I mean, you probably weren't really using it that irresponsibly, to be completely honest, right? And, and I've had people come on the channel before, you know, I was taking this and taking that and, you know, and, and I quit and I didn't have any issues at all. But there's been also instances where when I dug a little bit, and and uh, and try to get some more information out of those people, I learned that, bro, you weren't really even addicted to it. You're just kind of willy-nilly using it here and there. You can go, you can take it for a few days. You know, there's people out there that take it for three, four days straight, and they'll go like on a Kratom bender or something because they're a younger person. They're at that age where their main thing is weed. You know, they'll smoke weed and drink some alcohol, and that's just kind of their regular thing. And then they'll learn about Kratom, and they'll go take it, and they'll kind of take it on and off for a little bit. But then they're going sometimes two, three, four days in between dosing it and not really taking it. And then those people will come on here, oh, that's bullshit. I took this much and that much, and I never had any side effects. But then you weren't taking it like I'm taking it. And you weren't taking it the way a lot of people on here are taking it. Because if you were, you would absolutely, as a human biological person, have some negative withdrawal side effects, right? It's just it's just the way it is. Now, those side effects um, look different for different people, you know, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you're male, whether you're female, whether you have a slow metabolism or a high metabolism, where you, uh, whether you are an active individual or you are a sedentary individual, whether you eat a lot of processed foods versus a lot of healthy foods that are uh, highly nutritious, whether you are a, in general, dehydrated sort of individual or you are a person who stays hydrated, all of these things together. <laughs> Not sure what that was. All of these things together, put into the pot and stirred around, uh, make a difference and will affect how you feel when you go to stop taking. And probably the most important aspect of um, how bad the withdrawals will be for you is simply how much are you using on a daily basis? How often are you taking it? And how much are you taking when you do take it? Right? And uh, that's really at the very top of the list of utmost importance as far as how the withdrawals are. But anyway, uh, that's about 20 minutes of just rambling about some shit, but that's what I do on here. I'm just a guy on my lunch break. What do you expect from just a guy on my lunch break? I'm not claiming to be any medical professional. I'm just the first guy in history to become viral. And by viral, I don't mean... I have some sort of disease or I'm contagious. I, my videos, the first guy in history to go viral from sitting in his car on his lunch break 
doing this. That's me. That's me. I'm that guy. Claiming it. Right now. The secret. The secret. You guys ever seen that? What you think. What you put your mind on. What vibe are you proclaiming. And confessing and professing. Out into the universe. That is what will become of you. Um, it's a true thing. But it's not just as simple as just saying it. You know. You have to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it so that the universe can begin to work things into your favor and turn things around and spin things in the proper direction, right? To where what you are speaking will eventually become your reality, you know? And they say some of the most successful people ever in existence this is the thing that they had in common. That they all understood that what I think, what I say, is what will ultimately manifest of and in my life and around my life, right? So you can choose to believe it or you can choose to not, you know. And this goes for, you know, whether you're a Christian, whether uh, you are a Muslim, whether you are a Buddhist. Whether you are agnostic or atheist or whatever the hell political party you belong to, it's the same for everyone because all of us live in this same universe together. We are all connected to it in the same way whether you believe it or feel it or not. It's just what it is. So this is not a political statement. This is not a religious statement. This is not a profession of some set of beliefs that I belong to other than the belief in self and belief in the ability to be able to mold your world around you to in effect be exactly what you want it to be in the end right so uh, any of you wanting to come off of Kratom and you've gotten to a point where you've decided that's what you want to do? Now you know how to get there. Speak it. Speak it. Every day, all the time. Well, Corey, why haven't you done that? Well, because I just don't really want to be off right now. <laughs> uh, but I know how to get there when that time comes. Um, and I have gotten there before. I made the mistake of not staying off of it. But um, I don't know when that'll be. Because, you know, right now it's a good thing for me um, a blessing for me and uh, this is what it is alright at Adam Armstrong 9408 loving your vids man I've been on 4 teaspoons of Kratom for 2 years very rarely gone higher I used it for my anxiety and OCD just to get some relief from the crippling anxiety it's been rough for a long time but it really helped the problem is I've been taking it every day I just don't want to become dependent on something. I'm down to three tablespoons a day, and I'm just going to do a slow taper. I've got some agmatine, which apparently helps with cutting down. Adam Armstrong, thank you very much, bro. Uh, and I just want to say, th this uh, this comment is from a little while ago. I'm sorry, I'm just now getting around to it. And I've had this conversation with you guys a ton of times. I'm only one guy. I'm a super, super busy person. I work full time as well. This is literally just something I do on my lunch break. Hence the name, just a guy on my lunch break. But, um, you know, when, when you get over 700 subscribers on a channel and a lot of, and it's also a channel that's very interactive. People get on it and tell their two cents, uh, kind of tell their stories at times because it's liberating for people, you know? To be able to get on here and tell your story, it's not just something you can really talk about to everyone. So people really uh, use that liberation that they find on this channel and that empowerment to be able to tell your story and to get it out there into the universe. That way the load and the burden can be lifted off of you and can be put out there. People use that. 
And uh, that's one of the reasons I created the platform. I want people to use that. I want people to get in here and talk and comment and say, this is where I'm at, this is what I tried to do, and then other people get on, and, oh, cool, you know, I hadn't thought of that. Well, here's what I did, and here's my experience, and blah, 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 it just goes on and on. So, uh, but I'm only one person, and when you start getting a lot of people watching and interacting on a daily basis, sometimes I don't have a choice but to just kind of be a... Uh, a passive watcher of what's going on you know I wish I could sit and had the time to just talk to everyone and maybe you know if it gets to the point in the future where the channel is self-sustaining blah, 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 blah. can I buy a vowel um, self-sustaining is what I meant to say and I'm actually making some money at it and stuff like that then maybe I can uh, justify putting more time into it but as it is now I you know I don't and I know you guys wouldn't want this either. I don't want to take a ton of time from my family and my responsibilities as a father and a husband and stuff like that, sitting and typing responses to everyone. Although I still try to do a fair amount of it. I know you guys see me in the comments a lot, but I wish I could just respond to everyone all the time. But good thing is you got 700 something other people that are subscribed to this channel. And I see you guys talking to one another a lot on here. And that's a great thing. Um, and it is liberating and empowering and I love it. So, uh, Adam, thank you very much. Um, yeah. And I was going to talk about, uh, the amounts here too. Um, I'm going to have to hurry cause I don't want this thing to cut me off, but, uh, teaspoons. I'm going to talk a little bit about the amounts when I get to the end. So Adam be listening to that. Um, but Hey, get back on here let me know where you're at because you mentioned four teaspoons up top in your earlier earlier in your comment but then at the end you said you're down to three tablespoons so um you probably just mistyped that but i've had people on here before kind of you know use tablespoon and teaspoon synonymously you know as though they're the same thing sorry to disappoint you guys they are not the same thing. Um, and I'm sure Adam did just probably mistype this. He's probably taking one or the other, a teaspoon or a tablespoon. But a tablespoon is quite larger than a teaspoon. Um, and I've had this conversation with several people out there before that thought they were taking way less than what they're taking. Um, and yeah, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but a tablespoon... If you fill that bad boy up, you're looking at 13... 14 grams of powder god forbid it's a heaping tablespoon then you could be looking at 15 16 grams of kratom on that one spoon right and i think a lot of people don't realize that and i think a lot of people are really underselling how much they're actually taking um including myself but i've done a little research on it so i think i'm right if you guys uh drop a comment let me know where you're at with it i've had people tell me um uh, anyway, let, let me just, let me keep going, and then that way I can get to the end where we talk about this. Um, Asad Chow, Chowdhury, A-S-A-D-C-H-O-U-D-H-R-Y-A. I'm just going to call you Asad. <laughs> Sorry about that, my friend. Uh, it's all bunched together, so it's really hard to tell. Um, I'm two weeks clean off of Kratom. Definitely craving. My legs want to karate kick everyone. Restless and irritable. Did some huge joint yesterday in two SIGs, but back to the grind today. Going to work out so I can be a decent human being. LOL. Hey, Asad, stay with it, man. Uh, really proud of you for that. Said he's two weeks off. And I saw somebody ask him, like, what? You're still having restless legs after two weeks? It happens to some people, man. Um, that particular symptom started to get better for me after about a week or a week and a half. But for some people, man, it just depends on the person. It takes a little bit longer, you know, kind of for their body to adjust. But anyway, uh, at Who Cares 4464, Kratom is an awesome tool, but it's a tool, not a crutch. Just like everything in life, there are two sides to every coin. What was a tool can also be a crutch. Yeah. What is beneficial to you can also be a detriment if you're taking too much of it. You know, we uh, we touched on that analogy with the food a few minutes ago, the vitamin C. Food and vitamin C and, and magnesium are good for you, but if you take too damn much, 
you ain't gonna feel like it's good for you anymore <laughs> when you're sitting on the toilet, you know. Well, anyway, let me not go into uh, details on that. But uh, Dennis at Dennis Shizala, eighty seventy three said, "Does anybody know how many grams are in a tablespoon?" He and I already talked about this a little bit. This is Dennis was under the impression that he was taking less than I think what he's actually taking. Um, when I look up what what is equivalent to a tablespoon of powder or sugar or something like that online the number it gives is 14.175 grams so if you're taking a full tablespoon and i'm not talking about heaping where it's stacked up this tall on top of the spoon i'm talking about just a you know level tablespoon where there the powder or whatever it is is covering the whole spoon right uh, but it's not like extremely stacked up or anything that can be up to 14 grams of powder so if you're taking three or four of those a day, you can do the math. You're, you're up in excess of over 50 grams of Kratom per day. And a lot of people are under the impression that the teaspoon is less too. And I looked it up, a teaspoon of like sugar, powder, something like that is around five grams, a little more. This is not heaping. When you look this up online and it tells you it's five grams or whatever, they're not saying it's five grams if you stack as much as you can on top and let it, and I've done that before with a teaspoon, you know, take a teaspoon, go like that and just purposely try to get as much as you can on top of that spoon. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure and I'm aware that the times that I do that, when I stack up that teaspoon really high, I'm probably taking eight, you know, seven, eight, nine grams at one time, you know, so a lot of people think I think that it's way less than that. So I, if you're not actually measuring it or you using a digital scale, keep that in mind. Um, and, and jump in the comments and let me know if you find the different source than what I find. But everything that I look up, if you type in on Google, uh, you know, how many grams is a teaspoon? Or how many grams is found in a teaspoon? If it's something like sugar, flour, just whatever it is, the number that I'm getting is around five grams and that's not considering it to be a heaping teaspoon, right? So if you take a teaspoon and you get a thick teaspoon of it and you're letting the powder like stock stack up on top like that, then you're probably looking at adding an extra three or four grams to that teaspoon, you know? So if you're taking a big ass heaping teaspoon, that might be eight grams of Kratom powder at one time. And then if you're doing four of those, five of those per day do the math bro. you're getting up there you know 40 50 grams so uh that's why i say if you're wanting to quit you got to just measure it you're just gonna have to measure it um and uh and that way you know you can know how much you're to bring it down 